Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone see my screen? And if you can hear my mic. Okay, so I think yes naman for everyone. So I think we can start now. So since we're already in our um, chapter 5 for the quarter 4, so last quarter na tayo guys. What? Isang quarter na lang then mag-graduate na kayo. So kapit lang. Ilang months na lang po. Siguro hanggang July na lang. Okay, so unting sipag na lang. Unting pus na lang. Unting pagpupuyat. Mag-graduate na kayong lahat. And then makakapag-alichi yan. Iba sa inyo mag-work. So let's start. Okay, for the chapter 5 or unit 5, Quantitative Research Design and Methodology, Lesson 1, Quantitative Research Design. Okay, so how do you want your data to be measured and collected? Okay, so yeah, depende naman yan sa klase ng research na gagawin nyo. Kasi merong research na appropriate for qualitative, pero namang mga research na mas appropriate kung gagamitin natin ay quantitative. Okay? So kapag nag-quali yan, siya ka nag so iba namang type ng measurement and then uh, ways, no? How to collect the data. Okay. So after this discussion, uh, we should be able to differentiate the three research designs according to the purpose and procedure. Distinguish the research design used in quantitative research. Assess the quality of a specific research design used in a quantitative research study. Okay, so for, uh, for analysis, and so let's analyze the situation. A group of nutritionists wants, wants to test the effect of veggie eggs, a, ve a vegetable-based food supplements which is believed to increase the appetite of young children. The nutritionist compared two groups. One is the group who took the food supplement along with their meals and the other group was given their usual meals without the without that supplement. They compared the amount of food consumed by the group of young people, uh, young children who were given veggie eggs, and to those who did not take the supplement. Okay, so ang kino compare natin dito no yung uh, yung amount ng food na na, na intake or kinain ng children. Um, comparing comparing yung nakapag-take ng food supplement versus sa hindi nakapag-take ng food supplement. So, sino kaya yung mas maraming kinain? Okay, so, syempre, no? Um, uh, kumbaga, parang marami yung sampling na pwede natin uh, just to make sure, no? Na nakukuha natin yung tamang data. Maraming sampling tayong kailangan or marami tayong uh, population na kailangan just to prove na yung difference between the two. So, appropriate dito yung quantitative research. Okay. So, quantitative research design are empirical, straightforward, and can test their reliability and validity. Okay. So, we can test their reliability and validity through statistics. Okay, so straightforward kasi once na test natin yan or ginupit natin yan using statistic, doon nalabas kung merong relationship, merong correlation, merong, um, merong significant relationship between two variables. Okay, so what are the factors to consider in using quantitative research design? So ano yung mga dapat natin i-consider no? para gumamit tayo ng quantitative? Ayan, so quantitative research designs vary in terms of the following. So the intent, use of manipulation, and the procedures used. Okay, so deep research design of a study can easily be identified based on the abstract of a journal article. Okay. 
Okay, so under quantitative, we have experimental research design. Okay, so diba meron tayong tatlong re, uh, research design na sinabi kanina sa learning objective. Yung isa dito is experimental research design. So yung purpose ito is to, uh, the purpose of this experimental research design is to find out whether an intervention considered as the independent variable has an effect on dependent variable. Okay, so pag gumamit tayo ng experimental research design dun sa kaninang situation, yung independent nun is yung ano, uh, yung uh, children, no? And yung food supplement. And then yung dependent naman dun is yung kapag nag-take sila ng food supplement, uh, dadami yung, either dadami ba yung food or not, ganun. Okay, parang ano nito yung yung relationship between independent and dependent pag nag-increase yung independent pag nag-increase yung intake or nag ng food supplement ah uh, dadami ba yung food intake nila mas gagana ba sila kumain ganun kapag nag-increase yung isang variable maaring mag-increase or mag-decrease yung another variable so yung yung dependent doon is yung nag-increase or nag-decrease na variable depending on the other variable. Okay, when you see experimental research design, randomization of participants to different groups. So we have uh, two variables, the new curriculum or when you, we are you when we are using new curriculum or the old curriculum in study, what will be the effect? Okay, pag old curriculum ba, same level pa rin ba ng reading comprehension? If we're using the new curriculum, mas sataas ba yung level of reading comprehension ng mga students? Okay, that, uh, that might be the example. Experimental research design and example design must contain the following elements. First is the treatment or intervention. Control and extraneous variables and randomization of participants. Okay, when uh, when uh, we're going to use experimental design, ito dapat yung mga elements na, yung treatment or yung intervention. For example, yung gumamit tayo na food supplement, that can be an example of intervention. Controlling extraneous uh, variables and um, dapat ano, we're using randomization of participants. For example, uh, groupings into new curriculum and then another grouping for, for those who use the old, old curriculum. Okay, so for causal relationship, uh, application of fertilizer Z causes and then the plant growth. Okay, ito naman, uh, yung causal relationship. Para din siyang experimental. So another type of experimental research design under that is yung causal relationship. Yan, meaning, um, pag in-apply natin, pag more na nag-apply tayo ng fertilizer Z to the plants, and ano kaya yung mag magyayari? Mas tutubo mo siya, mas talago, ganun, or mas bibilis yung uh, tubo niya. Ganyan. As an experiment for design, so ako sa experiment, okay, so another one in the research again. As an experimental design requires the independent variable to be manipulated, but it lacks a key element of an experimental design, which is randomization. Okay, so parang same din siya ng thought with the experimental design. Yun nga lang, wala siyang randomization. So paano nga ba siya nangyayari? Okay. Okay, so yun, 
Uh, at first, no, kung maalala nyo, di ba, sa experimental, merong randomization population do, tapos magagamitin sila ng new curriculum or ng old curriculum, and then they, w- they will test what would be the level of reading comprehension. For the quasi-experimental naman, for example, meron section 1 and then section 2. The section 1, uh, pure new curriculum, uh, new curriculum lang yung gagamitin nila. And then, the section 2, pure na old curriculum lang yung gagamitin nila. So, and then, uh, itetest nila no, kung yung reading comprehension level ng section 1 and then section 2. Okay, sa tingin nyo, sino mas better sa dalawa? Yung experimental or quasi-experimental? What's your thought? Kasi di ba yung sa experimental, ano lang, random population in both uh, yung nasa loob ng randomization population na yun, random population na yun, is uh, lahat sila mag nag-gamit uh, ng new curriculum and old curriculum and then check lang kung tumaas ba yung level of comprehension. Well, dito naman, meron natin two groups. In section 1, gagamit ng new curriculum. Old curriculum naman sa section 2 and then they will compare. So I think sa dalawa, um, let me know if you agree, mas, ano, mas tingin ko mas makakuha tayo ng accurate na result if we're using, if we're going to use the experimental design. Okay? Kasi ang, ang parang ang error na pwede natin makuha is that how if yung nasa section 1 is ano uh, talaga, even using old curriculum or new curriculum, mataas talaga yung level of comprehension nila. Kasi malay nyo, matatalino talaga silang bata, di ba? And then, while the section 2 naman, um, maaring yung mga majority ng bata doon is at, at the first place talaga is hindi talaga ganun kagalingan yung reading comprehension nila. Okay? Either gumamit man sila ng new curriculum or old curriculum. Okay? So parang hindi natin makukuha yung pinaka um, pinaka accurate na result. Unlike ng experimental since iisang population lang yung gagamit ng new curriculum and old curriculum sa kaya magko-compare. Doon talaga magko-compare natin kung may effect ba talaga yung new and old curriculum sa isang bata. Okay? okay let's move on. What other situation can quasi-experimental research design be used? Okay. So next naman is uh, correlational design. Okay. So correlational research studies the association between two variables but does not tell its causality. Okay. So ito, chine-check natin yung two variables if meron silang significant correlation sa isa't isa. Though, we all know na wala naman talaga siyang, parang hindi naman siya, kumbaga, hindi naman siya uh, originally dependent, yung isang, yung dependent variable dun sa independent variable. Okay? For example, yung kanina sa isa, uh, kapag naglagay ba tayo ng fertilizer, tataas ba? Okay? So dito naman, um, to check din yung correlation, na, correlation ng two variables without, ano, parang without, parang wala talaga, yung, yung at the first place, hindi naman talaga natin ang experiment kung may effect sa isa't isa. For example, yung height and weight. Okay? So, talaga bang kapag mas mataas yung height mo, mas mabigat ka? Not all the time, di ba? So, depende pa rin yan sa laki ng katawan. Okay, so that can be used in correlational design. Yung height and weight, ayan. Okay, yung ano naman, yung iba naman, yung height, yung uh, yung size ng, ng animals versus their heartbeat. Okay? So, we want to test kung meron bang uh, correlation yung two variables na hindi naman talaga sila dependent sa isa't isa. 
Okay. We want we would uh, uh we just want to check kung meron silang correlation. Kasi for example, lumabas na yung ano pala yung weight pala is nakadepende kung gaano ka katangkad. Okay, pero 'di ba not all the time nangyayari 'yun. Kasi merong mga uh, people na kahit patangkad sila pero payat sila, so mababa pa rin yung kilogram nila. Okay, so for example, we want to check the relationship between two variables. For example, in stress level, and then yung academic performance. Okay, so let's just check na kung mas mataas ba yung stress level, mas ba yung academic performance. Kasi di ba merong mga merong mga students na even stress sila is kaya nilang pangalagaan yung academic performance nila. Okay, but we want to check the majority. When is it appropriate to use correlational research design? Okay, so let's check the difference between positive and negative correlation. When we say positive, pag, again, parang just like the experimental kapag nag-increase yung isang independent, yung independent variables mag increase din yung dependent. Or, ah, I mean, mali pala. Uh, we're not using here independent and dependent variables. So, pag, kapag yung isang uh, variable, yung variable A, nag-increase, yung variable B, nag-i-increase nag din. So, positive relationship yun. Kapag negative naman, inverse relationship siya. Meaning, kapag nag-increase yung value ng variable A, Uh, nag nagdi-decrease naman yung variable B. Okay? So, yan. Uh, positive as one variable in pieces, so is the other variable. This is also known as direct relationship. So, we, when we're using correlational design, we're, we're not using, or kumbaga, hindi tayo gagamit ng dependent at independent variables. Yung dependent at independent variable na yun, applicable lang sa for experimental research. So, for example, no higher motivation level of students is related to higher academic performance. Yan. So, kapag uh, mas mataas yung motivation ng students, mas mataas din yung mataas din pala daw yung higher academic performance. May positive relationship sila sa isa't isa. Negative naman, as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. This is called inverse relationship. Yan. Uh, higher stress level of student is related to lower academic performance. Okay? So, meaning kapag... Uh, yan, kapag daw mas mataas ang stress level is mas mababa yung lower academic performance. Okay, so kapag niran natin to sa statistic or by or siguro by just using mean, median and mode, we will check kung nagpositive ba or nagnegative ba yung relationship nila. Okay, so descriptive research design, the purpose of The purpose of descriptive research design is to study a naturally occurring phenomenon or subject of interest. It simply describes a specific characteristic or behavior of a target population. Okay, so parang instead of using numbers, uh, kumbaga parang majority of your paper is using number, yan, uh, parang describe natin yung mga target population natin. So what are some limitations of descriptive research design. Okay, so survey research explores the, the trends of characteristic of a group of people. Demographic research describe basic life events. Epidemiological research studies different patterns of disease and health. Okay, so remember that descriptive research designs explains explain different patterns of information about a target population. Okay, so for example, let's analyze this, this 
situation. Jamie and her group mates conducted a study exploring the extent to which parenting parenting styles are related to the self-esteem of Filipino adolescents. Adolescents. So kung baga um yung yung taas ba ng self-esteem ng Filipino is depende ba sa parenting styles ng mga and parenting styles ng parents nila. The participants answered two questionnaires. The study revealed that parenting styles were positively related to the self-esteem of Filipino adolescents. Okay, so just to wrap up, a quantitative research design can either be experimental, correlational, or descriptive. The key elements of, exper of an experimental research design are manipulation of the independent variable, control of extraneous variables, and randomization of participants. Well, the... Uh, Correlational research design aims to describe the relationship between two or more variables. The most common research studies under descriptive research design are survey, demographic, epidemiological research. Okay, so do we have any question for lesson one? Okay, if not, let's proceed to lesson two. Quantitative research design and methodology. Lesson two, sampling procedure for quantitative research. So how can you ensure, how can you ensure that the sample is representative of the population you are studying? So at the end of this discussion, we should be able to identify the different sampling techniques, choose an appropriate sampling technique for a research study, determine the sample size based on your target population. Okay, so what are the limitations of the surveyor? with regard to the, to the sampling of their participants and how can we how can we or the researchers ensure that the participants for their research represent a target population okay so sampling in quantitative research yeah is a group of people possessing a similar similar characteristic Okay, so for example, yung ano natin, yung uh, research natin, isang target natin dun is yung mga taga Las Piñas, teenager, and then or students, then dun tayo kukuha ng population. Sample pertains to the subgroup or portion from a population. So hindi naman lahat ng students sa Cavite or Las Piñas is dapat natin i-interview. Dapat kukuha lang tayo dun ng uh, enough sample para mag-conduct ng research natin. So what is the difference between sampling in a quantitative and qualitative research? Uh, I can say that mas madami yung sampling ng quantitative. Eh. Well, the qualitative research, madalas kasi itong uh, kinoconduct sa mga leaders. Eh. Like, pag ginamit kasi natin ng qualitative research in business, like I know, yung mga owners, yung mga ano ba yung parang mga distinctive na na target po ano natin target interviewin natin like mga post mga yun yung madalas yun dun ginagamit din probability sampling and probability sampling all individuals from target population have an equal chance of being selected for the sample Okay, so parang hindi tayo namimili, no? Random. Uh, kahit pa anong year niyan sa school, as long as students, students siya and, and taga-Cavite, then lahat ng yun ay may equal opportunity to answer your survey. 
simple random sampling. Simple random sampling is when the researcher randomly selects their participants from a list of all individuals from the population. Yan, parang ganun nga. No? So since hindi naman natin, uh, hindi naman natin lahat ng, hindi naman lahat ng nasa population ay dapat nating i-interview. So, kukuha lang tayo. Okay? So, random select and kahit ano, kahit anong section yan, kahit anong nababae man o lalaki, as long as pasok siya sa karate rin, ay student siya and then tagalas pinas. Then, that would be part of our interviews. Systematic random sampling, a systematic random sampling, the researcher randomly decides on a starting point on the list and chooses every end case from the population. Kunyari every, kunyari kumuha ka na listahan ng, ng students and then yung, yung every five or every fifth na students, yun yung interview nyo. Stratified random sampling pertains to the division of target population into subgroup and and randomly selects participants from each group. Okay, for example, uh, kailangan makukuha tayo ng sampu sa first year, sampu sa second year, sampu sa third year, tsaka sampu din sa third year. Hindi na pala tayo nagamit ang ganun, no? Hindi na pala tayo, mga grade level na pala tayo. For example, uh, 100 sa senior high, and then 100 for the uh, junior high, ganun. Non-probability sampling, sample is chosen by the researcher from the target population rather than being random. Pero dapat hindi ganun. Dapat, ano, uh, it's better pa rin bang na random para walang bias. At hindi natin, ma hindi natin uh, mamanipulate yung result pag namili tayo. What could be a disadvantage of using non-probability sampling? Yun nga, kapag may bias or namili tayo, pwede nating mabago no, yung resulta. Depende sa kagustuhan natin. Convenient sampling. Convenient sampling. The researcher... And the researcher recruits participants who are readily available and accessible to participate in the research study. So, kailan kaya siya nangyayari? Um, kapag, kunyari, ano, nagsisurvey tayo tapos, uh, di ba ang madalas sa ating interview or uh, binibigyan ng survey form is kung kunyari nasa school tayo, kung sino yung nasa study area, yung walang klase, yun yung madalas sa ating Maano eh, instead na yung mga nasa classroom kasi baka hindi tayo payagan ng teacher kapag mag-conduct tayo ng survey. Okay? Quota sampling involves selecting people from different subgroups from the target population. Parang same din siya ng, ano eh, ng isang ano, uh, kaninang nabanggit na kunyari uh, like 10 kukuha tayo sa ano, sa, sa senior high and then pag naman sa junior high. Yeah. Uh, in purposive uh, sampling, the researcher chooses their participants intentionally because they are considered as most most suitable for research study. Okay. Uh, pwede rin naman siya, no? Like, kasi syempre, um, kapag gusto talaga natin makuha yung result, uh, yung appropriate na result, pwede tayong mamili. Like, um, intention yung pag-ano natin. Depende rin siya sa study. So, pwede natin magamit yung purposive sampling. Snowball sampling is done when a researcher contacts few potential participants and asks them if they can refer more participants having similar characteristics. Okay, kapag may recruitment pa, no? Ayan. Uh, may mag yung, yung interviewee mo magre-recruit pa ng another uh, interviewee. Yeah. So remember, non-probability sampling is used to address practical concerns in a research study. The most common methods under this technique are convenience, quota, purposive, and snowball sampling. Sample size. The sample size is the actual number of individuals who participated in 
the research study and contributed significant data. Okay, just to wrap up, the goal of sampling in quantitative research is to obtain a sample of individuals who are representative of the target population. The, the techniques used in sampling for quantitative research are the probability and non-probability sampling. Probability sampling is categorized into simple, systematic, and stratified random sampling. Uh, so convenience, quota, purposive, and snowball sampling are the most common types of non-probability sampling. Okay, do we have any question for lesson two? Okay, none. Let's proceed to lesson two. Okay, lesson three. Research instrument for quantitative research. And how can we ensure that the research instruments constructed are reliable and valid? Okay, yung nagawa ba natin questioner is valid na ba siya and then reliable na para makuha natin yung result na kailangan natin. So we need to check that. So at the end of this discussion, we should be able to identify the instrument that researchers used in a quantitative research or study. Create a valid and reliable instrument for a quantitative re research or study. Assess the instrument's validity and reli reliability to provide a good a good quantitative data. Okay, so parang this is an example of a questionnaire or a survey form. Yeah. So, naggumamit siya ng uh, tawag dito ng rates. For, for example, like it, like our scale na tinatawag, like uh, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Okay. Types of research instruments. An instrument can be defined as a tool such as a questionnaire or a survey that measures specific items to gather quantity of data. Yung instrument na tinutukoy dito is yung sur survey form. Okay, yung questionnaire natin. Demographic form. So yung first part ng questionnaire natin or ng survey form natin is yung demographic forms. So here, ang kinokollect natin is yung mga basic information like yung age, gender, ethnicity, and annual income. So again, based to sa, depende to sa type ng research na meron kayo. Okay? Para pa ding, ano lang, age or gender lang, or age, gender, and annual income. So depende, no? Pwede pa rin natin dagbagan to. Depende sa research na. So, Here's the example of age, gender, civil status, and nationality. Okay, usually per first part yan ng survey for me. Performance measures. Performance measures are used to assess or rate an individual's ability, such as achievement, intelligence, aptitude, or interest. Yung Attitudinal measures are instruments used to measure an individual's attitudes and opinions such, uh, about such subject or any subject. Behavioral observation checklists are used to record individuals' behaviors and are mostly used when researchers want to measure an individual's actual behavior. Factual information documents. Yeah, factual information documents are accessed to tell information about the participants' documents, such as available public records. Okay, we just want to 
parang uh, another survey or another form ng ng instrument is yung you want to check yung for example yung financial statement ng isang company or yung performance ng isang empleyado yun okay, dapat meron tayong uh, public records so which type of research instrument do you think is appropriate for your study and why okay so construct research instruments for quantitative research Okay, so how do we construct research instruments? First, yung objective natin. And then, yung objective natin, di ba, nakoconvert siya into question. And then, kapag nakoconvert na siya into question, yan, uh, saka tayo mag-gather ng mga required information, like yung mga nasa related, uh, review of related literature natin. Kung baga mag-research pa tayo, kung ano ba yung mga madalas na, 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 na natatanong, based dun sa topic na meron tayo. Hindi tayo pwedeng basta gumawa lang ng sarili, nga, sarili natin question. We need to check kung, kung ano bang type ng survey, ano bang type ng instrument, ano bang type ng questions yung appropriate para dun sa topic mo. And then, through that, you can now form, formulate your questions or i-paraphrase mo yung existing ng questioner kasi yun talaga yung standard. Then, you can do that. The general rule in constructing a research research instrument is that it must ensure that the questions in the instrument are relevant to the objectives of the study. So again, yeah, even the questionnaire, you need to research that. Yeah, uh, magiging part siya ng review of related literature mo. So kung baga, hindi ka pwede mag-invento ng question. Okay? You need, you, need to make, uh, you need to make sure na may backup yung questions mo. Like, ito kasi yung ginagamit din sa ibang study. So, just to make sure na nasa standard yung questionnaire mo. So, again, no, hindi ka pa din mag-invento. Hanggang hindi ka naman credible na mag-create ang sarili mong questions. Yeah. So, actually, itong format na to, this can be used for, ano eh, conceptual framework. And first is the objective, and then yung mga related questions. Like, ito yung lumabas sa review of related literature muna. Uh, ito yung mga pwede natin itanong, and then uh, mga, mga information required. Sa, diba ito yung mga related questions na, na, na research natin for review uh, of related literature. And then... Um, i-connect mo pa yung mga kailangan mong information or kailangan mong result dun sa mga questions. And then you can now formulate, formulate your questions. So yung first part is yung demographic, like yung mga age, gender, and then next naman is yung yun na, yung uh, question na, questions na natin. Like what comes to mind when you hear the word health and wellness and then tick the following uh, activities or programs that you can think that you think you can promote and promote health and wellness quality of an instrument okay so how do we measure no yung quality ng questionnaire natin or how can we make sure na uh, valid ba to no baka naman mali mali yung tanong ganun hindi natin makuha yung result na kailangan natin so when when we, uh, for the reliability, it, it is the stability and consistency of an instrument under different circumstances or points. Okay, dapat yung bawat question consistent siya sa isa't isa. Okay? Validity, so the capacity to measure what is to, what is to suppose, what is supposed to measure. Do you think research instrument can be reliable without being valid? Why or why not? Okay, so let's check, no? So for the types of reliability, internal consistency, split half reliability, odd even, reliability, conduct, coefficient alpha. Ito yung mga techniques, no? Para ma-check ma, ma natin kung reliable ba yung questionnaire natin. But usually, ang gumagawa nito is yung mga statistics. Pinapa, uh, kailangan natin na certificate of validity na reliable yung, ano natin, uh, reliable and valid yung research instrument natin. 
most likely naman ni statistician yung gumagawa na yun. Okay. Uh, the, the Cronbach Scott T-shirt Alpha may be obtained using computer software like statistical analysis software or spreadsheets. Okay, so meron, ng mga, meron na tayong mga software na pwedeng gamitin just to check the Cronbach Scott T-shirt Alpha ng instrument natin. Tapos sa reliability, yung stability over time, test retest reliability. Kumbaga, itong questionnaire na ito, ginamit siya sa ganitong generation, and then after generation, ginamit siya. And we're still, uh, it's still giving uh, the same results, so it can be a reliable questionnaire. Okay? Or this year, and then after a year, ginamit pa din siya, and then the same results, so ano rin, um, same baga, reliable siyang questioner. Alternate forms, also called as parallel forms. Kumbaga, para mini-mirror mo yung isang, uh, yung questioner mo, parang pinaraphrase mo lang naman siya, but uh, just, but um, ayan, nag-paraphrase ka ng question, but it will still give the same result, then that can be a re uh, reliable. Kasi meron mga times na kapag pinaraphrase natin yung questioner natin, or in-arrange, arrange lang natin siya, and then uh, different result na siya, then hindi na siya reliable. What particular construct or variables are most likely to be stable over time? And then we'll check the types of validity. First, phase validity. Extent to which an instrument appears to measure what is supposed to measure. Okay, so if we want to measure you uh, financial management or financial behavior and financial uh, literacy, so dun ba sa question na yun, ay na-measure ba siya? Ayun ba yung supposedly result na makukuha natin? Content validity, ability to test the items to include important characteristics of the concept intended to be measured. Kung baga, uh, nandun ba yung mga characteristic na kailangan natin Kasi yun, para ma-measure natin yung financial literacy. For example, yung mga characteristic like kaya ba nila mag-compute ng basic computations, uh, yung mga simple interest, compound interest, time value of money, for example. Criterion validity tells whether a certain research instrument can be, can give the same result as other similar instruments. Okay, so for example, di ba tayo, di naman tayo gumawa ng questionnaire, nag-paraphrase lang tayo kasi di ba, di pa naman tayo credible na gumawa ng sarili natin questionnaire. And kailangan, natin, kailangan pa rin natin mag-base sa standard questionnaire. So ang ginagawa natin, uh, pinaparaphrase natin yung ibang questionnaire but uh, it will still give the same result, then that is valid. Okay. Construct validity, convergent, and discriminant validity. Okay, yung question mo ba, walang dinidiscriminate na, ano, na sample or population, then that can be valid. A valid test is always reliable, but a reliable test is not always valid. Okay, so just to wrap up before we end this discussion, uh, research instruments for quantitative study mostly have five general types. Demographic forms, performance measure, attitudinal measures, behavioral observation checklist, and factual information documentation, doc documents. The quality of a research instrument can be determined by its reliability and validity. Uh, reliability is defined as stability and consistency of an instrument over a period of time, while validity pertains to the extent where an instrument accurately measures what it's supposed to measure. Okay, so do we have any question, guys? Okay, so mostly naman sabi nila wala silang tanong. Okay? 
So, yun. Uh, again, yung assignment, pwedeng um, pwedeng itry ng unlimited try naman yun. So, I'm expecting na walang babagsak. Unless, hindi talaga kayo nagsasagot. Okay? So, if not na, then we can now uh, move on and have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye. Oh, so Bye, Puma. Bye, Puma.